Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another comic book reading video. And what we're going to do today is have a read through Spy Fighters number nine, published in 1952 from Atlas Comics, which was the company before Marvel was called Marvel. So Atlas Comics is really Marvel Comics from the golden age of comics. Okay, Atlas and Timely, they sort of flipped the, I believe they went from Atlas to Timely or it was Timely to Atlas and then into Marvel, right? And what you'll notice in this comic book is a lot of the creators from Marvel Comics that people know of uh, from the 19 uh, from the silver age of comics when marvel really took over with uh, spider-man fantastic four and whatnot uh, there's a lot of the same artists that were working on those comics that came from atlas and timely comics from the golden age of comics and this is no exception this comic is one of them and once we look at the some of the creators of this comic book you'll uh, if you've been following some of our previous comic book readings and comic book hauls you'll find out that uh, this is uh, look at this face I'll take this out of the bag and uh, that way we can take a look at it uh, without the glare and um, just to let you know where we got this comic from this is a comic book we picked up in comic book haul number 24 and that comic book haul was uh, brought about uh, a huge part by one of the people that's been following our comic book readings and they decided to contribute some funds so we could get ourselves a nice comic book haul and in comic book haul number 24 we got a pretty nice haul so a huge thank you to nicholas uh, for providing the fund for us to get this comic book and we ended up getting this comic book at an amazing deal at an amazing deal right um, and in that comic book haul, we do mention it. I'll mention it here as well because it's a, it's a pretty sweet deal. We ended up picking up this comic book and it's graded at, uh, at the back uh, with comic book hauls for the last few years. What I've been doing is writing down what the grade is. So this is good, very good, which is 3.0 right so we picked up this 1954 1951 uh, 52 comic book uh war comic book from the golden age of comics for a dollar canadian 75 cents us so there are some amazing deals to be had um when you're looking around for comic books for as long as they last anyway and this was one of them and we ended up getting a a couple of other actually more than a couple other amazing deals in that comic book hall number 24 and we picked up some beautiful comics uh two of which we've already done a reading for there were a couple of uh romance comics from 19 uh, from the golden age of comics that we picked up as well one of them was life story number 13 which some of the artwork was done by wally wood which was absolutely fantastic and we got a fantastic deal on that as well uh, so we've already done the reading for that and that comic book had uh, an interview with gene kelly so what we ended up doing was reading the interview with Gene Kelly and uh, sort of released a video just of the interview because I found the interview to be super cool and the other romance comic we read from that comic book hall was uh, Young Love number 31 and the artwork for that was done by uh, Jack Kirby so fantastic comic book haul and this is one of the ones that we're going to read right now and there's another comic book we're going to read as well from that haul that i picked out uh, which we didn't know when i ended up picking it up i uh, well we'll talk about it when we do the reading for that okay but it's basically the first uh, ant-man prototype some would argue it was the first ant-man really but we'll take a look at it uh, we did look at it during the comic book haul okay so let's crack this open and flip through it and uh, let me tell you there should be about five stories it is an anthology okay so there should be five stories in here 
Now, the cover, let's pull this out and take a closer look without the shine, glare off the plastic coming on the comic. The, the artwork for the cover of this comic book is done by uh, Sol Brodsky. Okay, let me get this in a way so we don't get the hardcore glare going on, right? It's a beautiful cover. And uh, the artwork is done by Sol Brodsky. And Sol Brodsky is huge. Um, Stan Lee has been quoted as saying that uh, Sol was really my right-hand man for years, right? And that's quoting um, Stan Lee. And uh, Saul was basically, he was instrumental in, uh, during the golden age of comics for Atlas Comics and uh, Timely, I believe. And then when the silver age of comics came in, as Stanley says, he was uh, his right hand man, right? He was instrumental in putting together the amazing Spider-Man logo and a lot of the other logos that are still in use for a lot of the characters um, in Marvel Comics, right? Um, and another quote from Stan Lee basically says that, 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 that um, Lee described, I'm just uh, quoting from uh, something I found on Wiki, but Lee describes Brodsky as, quote, my assistant for years and the company's production head, he could write, he could draw, he could ink, he could do, everything right fantastic fantastic and that fine print is way too small for me to read even with my glasses okay but this thing came out in july um, 1952 and uh, the colors for this by the way the colors for this cover were done by stan goldberg and stan goldberg uh, was huge uh, produced a lot of work for Archie Comics and he did the original colors for the first few issues of Spider-Man as well as the Fantastic Four, right? So he's huge. What does this thing say? Surrounded on all sides by the Reds, Lieutenant Clark Mason is trapped with his Doom Patrol. And up top here, I guess during a golden age, uh, maybe starring federal agent Clark Mason. So maybe Clark Mason was uh, one of the big, bigger characters, right? War adventures of spies and actual combat. Cool. I love the eyes. Check out the eyes. Wow. That's trippy. I guess he's all shocked because the person right he's stepping on the ledge and the rocks rocks are falling and all of a sudden they're caught in surprise mode right fantastic halt the guy's holding the other guy's mouth so he doesn't freak out holding his gun at the top there wow cool cool let's flip through this Okay. Oh, we usually end up reading, and I haven't flipped through this by the way. We always, for all the comic book hauls we've read, we've read the fine print, but we've got a chunk missing here, unfortunately. We'll read what we can for sure. But before we read that, let's just. Uh, Take a look at the back front cover. Oh boy, here's the great assortment ever offered. Fireworks, you could order fireworks. Over 1,000 pieces, nice. I don't think we've seen fireworks uh, before advertisements for fireworks in comics. Over 1,000 pieces, 1425 retail value all yours for only 4.95 look at all this one of these probably costs 4.95 now rich bros all american assortment get set for the most fun you've ever had enough fire 
enough <laughs> let me bring this up so you can read it too uh, enough fireworks to last all day all day they're gonna burn all this all day <laughs> total pyromaniacs <laughs> right all day evening pieces too nice contains plenty of chinese flash crackers including seven packages of the world's famous gr gorilla and zebra crackers plus all these items repeating bombs skyrockets <laughs> sparklers roman candles oh roman candles and believe it or not in canada it's now illegal or at least in british columbia it's now illegal to sell roman candles can you believe it uh roman candles whistling cyclones electronic cannon salutes fountains novelty co <laughs> colored fire cherry bombs aerial whistle bombs sn snakers oh snakers are fun you just let them up they go Pshew. right bursting comets sparkling fire darth aerial flash bombs my god lawn cones whistle mutes pine wheel also 100 uh, salutes free punk what what and then they got another package here lawn display no noise assortment no noise what approximate retail value 1375 yours for only 595 wow look at that check this out notice what did i say print your name and address carefully enclose money order or check <laughs> none none sent cod that's um cash on delivery or something like that anyway shipped only by rr express collect uh name nearest express oh man i wish we could order firecrackers with the mail today that'd be fantastic well fireworks firecrackers would be fun too take a look at this what does that say send postcard for free catalog of other assortments and displays yes please rich brothers fireworks company department 10 box 514 sioux falls south dakota nice 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 i don't think this is legal anymore what does this say the fine print we gotta read some of it uh, spy fighters is published by classic syndicate inc office at uh, publication op office of publication 355th avenue new york new york uh, entered a second class matter at the post office new york under the act of march 3rd 1879 additional entry at uh, Syracuse, Syracuse New York published bi-monthly 1952 by Classic Syndicate Inc 350 Fifth Avenue New York volume number one number nine July 1952 and we've got chunks missing uh, copy something subscription rate dollar 45 for 12 issues including postage no similarity between any of i guess characters and persons and or institutions appearing in this magazine with those of any have living or dead i guess it's supposed to be um, something something is intended and any such similarity which may exist is purely coincidental printed in i'm assuming it's going to say the united states cool cool so the other person by the way we have uh, we'll flip through this and then we'll pick uh, at least a couple of stories to read through this um the other person that works on this is al uh, bellman and he did the story for the chance and l bellman was pretty big as well uh, al alan bellman uh, he worked a lot for timely comics which is again the precursor to atlas comics and uh, he worked on in the 1940s and 50s on Captain America and the Submariner and the Human Torch and Mystic Comics. 
Um, so he was really huge as well. And I believe the last story of this, which is called The Tin Soldier, is, is by Sol Brodsky. Uh, but I believe I found one place. It was also supposed to be by uh, Joe Senat. And Joe Senat is huge as well. Just to let you know the numbers on Comic Vine, um, Joe Senat has he's got 1,200, almost 1,300 comic books to his credit. Sol Brodsky, aside from being Stan's right hand man and designing logos and whatnot, he's got like 382 comic books credited to his name. More fireworks, look at this. And Stan Goldberg has got 884 comic books to his name. So a lot of a lot of history here, right? Awesome. Stone Cold Dead. Free private. This is the chance. Cool. This is uh, Alan uh, Al Alan Bellman's work. Cool. Look at that. We'll flip through this. We're gonna read through this one too. Rare army patches. Wow. You can be a bombshell in any touch sport. Touch sport. American American combat judo. How to hypnotize. <laughs> nice. <laughs> awesome. It's easy to hypnotize when you know how. Doom Patrol, I think we're gonna read this for sure. So we're gonna read Doom Patrol for sure as well. Nice. We don't wanna give any spoilers, so I won't hang around on the pages too long. More fireworks. I guess a lot of the war comics had fireworks associated with them. Walkie talkie, I believe, check that out. The original cell phones, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, look at this one. Trippy. Tin Soldier, what a panel. What a panel. And Tin Soldier is by uh, Sol Brodsky as well. And supposed to be Joe Senat. I'm not sure how much contribution. We're going to read this one as well. This one looks trippy. Toy Soldier. Okay, we got our reads going on. Television Bank. What is this one? The show's on, gang. New, super duper, simply terrific. Television Bank. Ah, oh, so bank. You just put money in it. Little piggy bank. Save your hair. <laughs> Look at this one. We've never seen this one before. <laughs> what in the world? What? Kill these hair destroying germs with war's formula. Stuff. Oh, look at this. It's got the names of the whatever they're trying to portray here. Petrus Porium Oveil. Moro Cocos. Staphylococcus albus. Micro, micro bacillus. Look at that. Crazy. Look at the guy's face. Oh no. Save your hair. Scalpitch. Falling hair. Dandruff. Head orders. Sounds horrific. <laughs> Crazy. And of course, we got the muscle advertisements we've looked at before, right? Should we read one of these? Let's read. I don't know if we've ever read one of these ones. Hey, quit kicking that sand on our faces. That man is the worst nuisance on the beach. 
the girl says. Take a look. Listen here. I'd smash the muscle guy saying, I'd smash your face. Only you're so skinny, you might dry up and blow away. Whoa. The big bully, the guy says. I'll keep even, I'll get even someday. Oh, don't let it bother you, little, little boy. Oh. Darn it. He says. I'm sick and tired of being uh, a scarecrow. Charles Atlas says he can give me a real body. All right. I'll gamble a stamp and get his free book. Boy, it didn't take Atlas long to do this for me. And it says later, right? For me, what muscles? That bully won't shove me around again. So going from that to that will probably take you about five years. If you do it hard, it's about three, four years. Five years, if you do it right. If you do it right longer, really, to a certain degree. Oh, he goes to the beach with the same lady. What? You, you here again? Here's something I owe you back. Smash on the net. Oh, Joe, you are a real man after all. Hero of the beach, people say. Gosh, what a build. He's already famous for it. <laughs> wow. How times have changed, eh? I can make you a new man too in only 15 minutes a day. And that is not going to be only 15 minutes a day. Guaranteed. Right. Cool. Oh, what is this guy? Here's the advertisement for these ones. Electric spot reducer. Huh. Take off excess weight. Try the spot reducer. 10 days free in your own home. Muscle aches. Also use it for aches and pain. Check that out. So I guess some kind of heat pad thing. Yeah, and this book would be, it is great at uh, good, very good, so 3.0. And I'd say it's 3.0 as well. 2.5, 3.5. Right. 2.5, 3.0. Nice cover. Nice cover. Should we have a read through this game? Let's have a read through this. Check this out, it's got a little stamp on it. April, April 23rd, R-E-C-D, recorded, I guess, April. So if the cover date is July, I doubt it if the stamp would have stayed active since 1952, maybe, right? I wonder if that's the original 1952 stamp that's on there. I'd be surprised. Tonight we die. Let's take a look at this. Should we read this one too? Let's read this one as well. It's been a while since we did a comic book reading. We might as well enjoy a nice anthology read. Take a look at this. Tonight we die. Starring Clark Mason, Spy Hunter. What does a man do? What does a man do when he's trapped with not one chance in a thousand of getting away alive? Here's the answer. In one of the bloodiest battles of the Korean War, the story of a slaughter. Check this out at the bottom here. All names and places in this uh, 
in these true to life stories are fictional any similarity between actual persons or places and those used in these stories is purely coincidental okay we've read comic books where they say they were based on true stories and these are fiction The first battalion of a mixed UN unit, my unit, was surrounded for for four days near Kitso without hope of rescue. Machine guns firing. With all we all knew it was survival or death, and we fought as, as if these were our last seconds on earth. For many, those were the last seconds. Blam, blam, ah. Oh, there's another person in the back that's being shot as well, not just this guy. This guy's being shot in the head. Ouch. Look at that. A retreat had been ordered, but our unit was overrun almost immediately. To make things worse, our radio was destroyed. For days, for days, we tried to contact headquarters in vain. Still no luck, Lieutenant. Keep trying. If we reach headquarters, they're sure to send help, he says. Suddenly, I saw an oblong shape arc through the air. Wait, Lieutenant, hear something? Something's coming in. For heaven's sake, look out! Boom. So it must have been a mortar or something. Oh no. The radio equipment was smashed to smithereens. So were most of the men, except one. As he rose giddily to his feet, I couldn't believe my eyes. Gosh, that was gulp. Close, he says. Close, man, how did you do it? You should be lying in pieces, they say. There's mortar explosions all over the place, eh? I guess it's the rabbit's foot seeing me through eyes oh, kissing a rabbit's foot seen me through world war ii without a scratch now she'd done it again hmm. nothing but a cockeyed miracle could have saved you smack kisses the rabbit's foot another man saw what happened sergeant mick Mahan looked at the rabbit's foot as if it were the hope diamond. Look at the grin on his face. The guy with the rabbit foot, right? Where'd you get it, Peters? Kansas. The afternoon I sh shot him. Ha! Huh. A cyclone blew through town, crushed my house like a pack of cards. If I'd, if I'd been home, well, I wouldn't be here. Wow. Okay, Peters, kiss the foot and get into get into line. Some guys out there want to make a make a monkey out of your superstition. They should know better better than that. You can't make a monkey out of a rabbit. Think there's something to it, Lieutenant? The other soldier is asking. He does. He's not even wearing a hat anymore in the back. I don't know if you guys can see for sure. See his blonde hair. That's one way to distinguish him. Eh? And he shot the rabbit himself. That's where he got the foot from. So it's his own, uh, his own hunt. 
think there's some to, something to it, Lieutenant. I'll put it this way, McMahon. If I if I had my choice between the rabbit's foot and seeing a UN armor column come over the hill, I know what I'd prefer. Crack, bam, blam, ping. Firing going on everywhere. So the battle for survival went on, but as time passed, there were fewer and fewer survivors. And them rats got nothing better to do than wipe us out. What are you worrying about? You're safe with that rabbit's foot in your pocket. Bata 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 prata. There it was. Vroom, brown, brown. There it was, the philosophy of three men facing death. One relying upon magic. The second envying the first, his superstition, and the third putting his faith in armor. Would any of us be vindicated? Would any of us survive the death whizzing all around us? As for the commies, they attacked as if life or death didn't matter. Only killing us mattered. Yet we, we repulse them by day. Arr, they're taking people down. And by night, our fire took a rightful toll on their troops. But the toll they took of our, of our men was even greater the fewer we were. The better were their chances of overwhelming our position on the next rush. So let's do or die now. Another man gone, another rifle that can't be fired. How long do you figure we'd last, Lieutenant? As long as we have to doctor, he says. Brave words, Lieutenant, but brave men die, as you see. Why shouldn't the bravest hopes be doomed to death too? That's what the medics say. Hope goes on forever, doctor. No patience is lost till he breathes his last. We're a dying patient, yet we might live if, if help comes in time. Did it come in time for these men? No, they were unlucky for luck to exist others have to be unfortunate oh that's a great saying for luck to exist others have to be unfortunate i wonder if that's uh... i have to think about that one for luck to exist others have to be unfortunate mm. i don't know about that i don't know only in gambling maybe I'm convinced Mason just convince just convince the rest of that rabbit Peter has a piece of he's still looking at the rabbit's foot mock Peter all you like doctor I'm for anything that keeps a man's hopes alive I believe nothing's inevitable except death be resigned Mason it's better than it's better that way man the medic is gloomy doc's right lieutenant there ain't nothing coming over that hill you're watching but the angel of death maybe the doc and mick man were right just the same i was playing the string string out wasn't much of a string left though just 20 able-bodied men one good sustained rush one breach of our line and they'll be pouring through the hole like a flood of death he says
Yet if we could hold him, keep him away from it for another six or seven hours, reinforcements might come. We might be rescued, he says. The men would fight, each man with the fury of seven men. They knew there was no surrender. A swift death was better than torture. What are you thinking about, McMahon? I'm thinking I should have been born a girl. I'd be home baking cookies for the church festival tomorrow instead of getting myself spitted on a red bayonet. blonde hair guy still uh, holding his rabbit's foot whether we were the quietest group of men who ever made a last stand I don't know but nobody said a word till I fired the flare that meant the end was on its way reds on schedule eh well nice to have known you lieutenant likewise mcmahon but don't give up till you see the red in their eyes i still don't know how it worked out the way it did i just remember the fight we put up we battled like men possessed keep up the fire they might break bah, 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 bah. Eee, screaming crack bam not this time too many waves they keep going over their own head wow they keep on coming and falling it was true this time they would couldn't be stopped we were just not killing enough of them they ain't stopping they're coming close Boom. On they came, shrieking their buns eyes. Buddha, buddha, prat, crack. It's the end. They're, they'll be on top of us in a second. I took a quick look around. Peter was kissing his rabbit's foot. McMahon, for some reason, was watching Peter. Peter's. Then there was no time to watch anybody. The red stormed up to us with gleeful shrieks and bayonets eager for GI bellies. Give it to the sons of Satan. Take as many as you can with us, he says. Everything turned into a nightmare. The red swarmed over and around us, shrieking and stabbing. Aye. Nobody had a chance. I, oh, look at the guy's face. Oh. These silhouetted war movies are amazing. The hand coming up. War uh, comics. All around me, I saw my friends go down. It was a slaughter. Crack, wham, boom. Desperately, I struggled with the reds. Suddenly, I felt a thud on my back. Then a hatchet blew behind my ear. A pitch blackened blackness opened beneath me. A thousand needles turned in my chest and oh later after what seems an eternity of darkness i opened my eyes slowly not knowing what to expect and saw stars the stars of heaven, earth's heaven, I'm alive, 
I wasn't killed when the needle still burned in my chest but it was good to feel pain pain meant I was alive that man all around me is thinking look at the faces suddenly I saw one head lift itself from the many dead ones McMahon shh lieutenant they're up on the hill turn tor torturing the boys they got alive I've been going mad hearing the screams another head lifted a groan broke from his lips Peters McMahon hastily stiff stifled the groan oh, he's putting his hand on his mouth the jerk I can't keep him still he lost his rabbit's foot and he wants to look for it now don't be insane Peters McMahon can he move pulling him he got a chest wound but he can move so can I we ought to take off lieutenant they might come back you're right McMahon start crawling not on your belly on your back and backwards when you, when we get into the shadows of the hill straighten up But we hadn't crawled an inch when Peters got upon his hunches. Lieutenant, the crazy nut, he's looking for his rabbit's foot. Oh no. It was in my pocket when the Reds came. I ain't leaving without it. My luck will run out. I got to find it. Get down, Peters. They'll see you out here. Out here. They're investigate let him i ain't leaving without the rabbit's foot it's here somewhere uh -oh. peter's voice carried the rats turned their their heads peters they see us you fool why didn't you listen he says But there was no time to quarrel the reds were coming and this time they'd make sure to leave us dead grab a gun maybe we can backpedal into the hills if we keep them at bay you and your rabbit's foot he says we let them have it and they went down but not enough of not enough of them the others pressed on the bombs don't anything stop them suddenly the reds before us began to drop by the score strange thunder filled the valley i turned my head in a daze but there it was big a big as life and just as beautiful uh, just as beautiful UN armor it's no dream it's it's real we're saved we're saved Ra -ta 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 -boom. Peter sank to his knees and cried with joy but McMahon uttered a crooked cry look look McMahon McMahon was shot in the back but McMahon couldn't hear me an hour later Peters and I watched him being picked up by the grave detail poor guy another second and look something fell from his pockets oh look at that it's Peter's rabbit foot the rabbit's foot McMahon stole it from me the dirty thief he wanted to steal my luck 
Wait, Peters. Look at McMahon. He had the rabbit's foot. Yeah, that kind of luck he can't take with him. Oh, wait a second. Is he throwing the rabbit's foot into the... with uh, McMahon? Wait, Peter. Look at McMahon. He had the rabbit's foot. Yeah, that kind of luck he can't take with him. Oh, I don't know if he's giving it up. Lieutenant, a cat's got, an, got nine lives. Maybe a rabbit's got the same. Maybe I used up all the lives in it. Maybe. Come on, Peters. Let's get our wounds dressed. Oh, that's right. Because McMahon had the rabbit's foot in his pocket, but he still got shot. That's right. So Peters just throws it on his uh, gurney, I guess. Well, the dead detail carrying him away. So the rabbit's foot used up his luck. As I said before, I'll take armor. That's what he says, the lieutenant. Right? That's a cool story. That's a cool story. What else should we read? The Chance. Let's read The Chance. And this is by Alan bellman okay beautiful let's take a look if you were the gi in the story would you take the chance let's take a look at this let's take a look at this And I say, stop gripping about it. A metal ain't nothing but a chunk of metal, soldier says. Maybe, but I wish I had one. Just something to show to my kids after this mess is over. Except I ain't never had a chance to win one. That kind of chance fuzzy is one I'd rather not have. Thank you. I'm satisfied with things as they are. Men will find time to gripe and dream, even under conditions such as these. Bullets fly, shells explode, but dreams go on and on. His name was Private Fuzzy Chambers, just one of an one of an outfit giving the Chinese Reds reasons for regretting the Korean War. A good soldier, a splendid fighter, just one of the Joes. All I'll end up with is a campaign ribbon. Boy, if the chance ever comes, will you shut up and concentrate on this here shooting? He wants to be a hero fuzzy chambers the heavy guns on both sides had been belching death for three days even the danger and the excitement of war can become mono monotonous after so long a time to these men it had become just a job to do as well as possible explosions all around Hold it, cease fire. What? They're quitting. There's the white flag. Oh, yeah, there it is. There's the white flag right there. Oh, geez. Another chance gone to get me a medal. You nuts or something? We're still alive, boy. The shooting's over. Yeah, but I, attention, men, they're coming over. Keep your guns on them. 
every second. Wow, there's a lot of them there. Look at that. That's a mound of soldiers. Holy smoke. Hundreds of them. Why? They would have wiped us out if they held out a little longer. Look at all the guns pointing to The surrender was un, uneventful and orderly. The enemy was unarmed and placed in, uh, in wire exposure uh, enclosures until they could, they could be transported back to the lines. Oh, this is the life. Just wake me up when, um, when we get to Albany. He's just chilling. Well, there goes my chance, my last chance for a medal. My kids will never believe their old man was a soldier. Yeah, keep keeping me awake, boy. He's just relaxing. That's a cool panel. So the fighting was over, but there was still soldiers' work to be done. Collins, Scarpone, Chambers, come on, we're going on recon. What? What for? They gave up, didn't they? Oh, for Pete's sake, they say. Aha, uh -huh. tough luck, ladies. Oh, give the girls your regards when I see him in my dreams. Ah, oh, come on. Move. Let's go. So four of them are going on recon. The recon unit moved out casually, taking it easy, taking it easy in the afterglow of the surrender. Say, this ain't bad looking country, you know what? Nuts, I'll take Brooklyn. Every chance I had for a medal, all up the creek. This guy's still worried about his medal. What for? You always, oh, someone got shot. What the blazes? Sniper, oh. Two of them are taken down, look at that. That guy, and that guy looks like it. Possibly. Oh no, another one. Get out of here, snipes. Snipers with silencers. Oh, you got taken out. The dirty. The shots came from nowhere, instantly killing Fuzzies, three buddies. By sheer instinct, he ducked behind the protection of a bush. Holy smoke, there they come, the main body of the enemy. That surrender was just a trick, wow. Look at that, look at all those people. Continued after next page. They came, hundreds of them, creeping up on the unsuspicious American troops. If I stay low, they won't see me. I can keep up with them. But how am I going to warn the guys? I'm cut off. Yeah, look at that. He's behind the, he's behind the rock over there. And here comes the troops marching through. They're close enough to attack now. Well, big boy, you wanted to win a medal. Here's your chance. Let's see if you deserve one, he says. He jumps.
comes out. Fellas, fellas, look out. Here come the rats. Ah, ta 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 ta. He gets gunned down. What the heck was that? Rats coming at us. Wake up, guys. Everybody's getting up. The Yanks opened up with everything they had, throwing back the last desperate ch charge of the enemy. And out in the field, a body rested for all time from the rigor of rigors of war and peace. Well, Fuzzy wanted the medal. Too bad he'll never get the chance to see it. No, but his kid will. And that's what he wanted. They're just talking about it, visual in the background. The end. The end. Be careful what you wish for, yeah? Be careful what you wish for. This is a text story that was continued from the story that was earlier on. But we'll skip this one. The text story. We'll read the comic. Continued after the next story. Oh, this is it. Stone Cold Dead. Right. Oh, check this out. What is that? Statement of ownership, management, circulation required by the act of congress of august 24 1912 as amended by the acts of march 3rd 1933 and july 2nd 1945. take a look at this a lot of uh, legal stuff here i guess title 39 united states uh, of spy fighters published by monthly at new york oh this is like the fine print so this is like the fine print at the beginning down here right but a little bit more detail i guess the cover is if owned by a corporation its name and address must be stated and oh this is all the regulations what they have to say right Holding 1% more of the total. Oh, what's this? Let's read number two here. Uh, the owner is, if owned by a corporation, its name and address must be stated, and also immediately thereafter, the names and addresses of stockholders. Owner owning or holding 1% or more of the total amount of stock. If not owned by a corporation, the names and addresses of the individuals owners must be given if owned by a partnership or other uncorporated firm its name and address as well as that of each individual member must be given wow a lot of real legal stuff signed robert solomon sworn to and subscribed before me this 19th day of september 1951 seal peter f Zimmer, notary public. Wow, wow, wow. Who knew it was a lot of legal stuff? Well, we knew. We've read some of them, right? And the staples of this are pretty much nicely intact, so that's really good. Doom Patrol. Let's read Doom Patrol. Nice, nice, nice. Doom Patrol by Saul Brodsky. Right. Take a look at this. Clark Mason again. Right. Let's read this guy. Doom Patrol. A squad of men were sent into enemy territory to play decoy, to expose themselves to the enemy and lure them into a trap. It wasn't anybody's fault if the trap they sprung was on themselves. Oh, it's not going well for them. We're going to be killed. We'll be blown to bits. There's no way out. No way out. He's screaming. Shut up, Mayfield. You're not going to quit on us. Understand? 
you're not going to quit, he says. Starring Clark Mason, spy fighter. A lot of these Golden Age comics, they start off with a big panel at the beginning. Right. Sort of morphed into a splash page, I guess, right? But not the whole page. Lieutenant Mayfield was the kind of guy who liked to make an impression. You know the type. He's always the big sport who reaches for the check a second too late. Uh -huh. Nick's Mayfield, this one's on me, he says. <laughs> He's got a little mustache too. Check it like that. I think it's a little mustache. Little dick dastardly mustache. Right. I think it's got the dick dastardly mustache there too, maybe. With a gal, he always begged, begged off about marriage. He was always waiting for that big promotion. I want to be worthy of you. You deserve nothing but the best. It'll be better for us to wait a while, he says. In Officer's Candidate School, Mayfield flattered his way into high grades. A remarkable lecture major. If only all my instructors, instructors had your gift for explaining things, he says. <laughs> On the battlefield, Mayfield built up a fine reputation for soldiering and self-sacrifice by being the first one to volunteer for difficult assignments, especially those he knew he wouldn't get. Huh. I'd be glad to go, sir. I know, Mayfield, but I need a man who knows more about radio signaling. He planned cleverly. He was always cool and firm, always willing and daring. I think I can tackle this assignment, sir. Sorry, Mayfield, you're too vulnerable, too valuable to risk losing an adventure of this sort. We need somebody more expendable. Oh, that's saying it honestly, eh? I met Mayfield when he was at the peak of his reputation we were slugging up a road in eastern korea when red straffling planes take cover i remember mayfield's face talk about panic the man was the living embodiment of terror <laughs> don't stand there mayfield get off the road yes yes he froze like a deer in headlights, right? Rrr. Everybody raced for cover, but Mayfield flew. <laughs> oh, there he is jumping. I guess. Looks like it. He buried his face in his helmet as if he could have squeezed his entire body into that pot of steel. What remained exposed quivered like a touched nerve. No, 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 stay away. Oh no, he's in total panic mode. The worst thing to happen. Puck, 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 puck. The bullets are hitting the mud. I was near enough to him to hear Mayfield moan and groan. Oh, he's screaming. So this is the fearless, dare anything Mayfield. The apple of the brass's eye, he says. Oh, oh. Oh. 
But when the attack was over, you wouldn't think Mayfield was the same guy. Nasty 10 minutes, wasn't it, Mason? I wonder how, how some of the other men took it. It was their first experience under fire. How about you, Mayfield? The soldier asks him. I? Don't be silly. This was like picking daisies in a deli. Whatever gave you the idea, this was my first taste of action. Forget it, Mayfield. Come on, boys. Back to Hayfoot. Hayfoot, straw foot. But I made an enemy. I could see it in the way Mayfield looked at me. Somehow I probed beneath the pose. I'd seen something I wasn't supposed to see. He's wondering about the impression he made on me. The crummy bluffer. He lives by impressions. By why should a man live by impressions unless it's the impression he wants people to go by? He's wondering how much I saw, worrying about how much I might tell. Tell whom, Mayfield, he says. Weeks passed. We saw plenty of action, pushing north. Every yard had was paid for in blood. It couldn't go on. This doing it the hard way. A grand strategy was needed and the high brass came north to figure something out. We need a decoy and a trap. Boom, boom, boom. Meaning we need men willing to take a hundred to one chance of not coming back alive. The high brass turned around slowly and looked at us. We have a plan that will make things easier for our position in general. But the plan will entail great danger. Therefore, we need volunteers. No man need be ashamed not to volunteer. Few will come back alive, he says. I could feel the quirk in Mayfield's na na nature quiver as if he'd been struck his hand went up automatically. I'll go, sir. I'm not surprised, Mayfield. I knew you would. Oh, this time they didn't turn him down. Oh, no. He's in trouble. If Mayfield expected the usual uh, reaction on the part of the brass, being passed over in favor of someone less vital to the general welfare, he had a shock coming. Thank you, my boy. This is one time we need a wise head in the lion's mouth. Anybody else? We need one more officer. With Mayfield in, in on this deal, It'll really be a suicide mission unless somebody's there to take when the cr take over when he cracks. I'll go, sir, he says. Oh no. That's how it happened. My being thrown together with Mayfield on a suicide mission. You'll expose yourselves to the enemy here. Lure them into this valley here. Try not to let yourselves be cut off and surrounded for obvious reasons. Is the assignment clear? Perfectly, sir. They say. I wonder if that's Mayfield or the other guy. I think it's the other guy. Mayfield kept to himself till sundown. Then we led, let forth three dozen men, the human bait for the trap. Mayfield didn't say two words to me. A brave man, Mayfield. You'd think he was taking a walk down a country lane. Hmm. No explosions yet. Maybe I have Mayfield wrong. He's thinking. 
as we marched deeper into the enemy territory i began to wonder not a sign of fear from mayfield not a word about anything in fact though we both knew we'd been observed by now ah, they're watching them he's calling it in and you can see them i believe that's them in the background marching those guys there right over the hill so he's calling it in finally we reached our goal a slight rise of ground ideal for slit trenches this is it mayfield we place sitting duck till they come 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 out to kill us men commence digging trenches set up machine gun in um, emplacements an hour later when flares went up in the north i saw mayfield's face for the first time since darkness fell scared to death i knew it oh, he's panicking again the valley became became a blaze with artificial light we saw why red tanks mayfield began to shake steady pal this is no time to poop out They're over the hill, way in the background, I guess. There was no need to quake. A minefield had been placed between the red position and ours, and the unsuspecting beggars cleared it with their own machines. poor slobs they were like confused hippopotami looking for an escape route and not finding any wherever they turned they put their awkward feet into something bow, bow. they're taking out the tanks with the minefield through all this mayfield remained like a taut string watching then when one tank the last tank somehow escaped the minefield he snapped that tank got through it's coming for us mason mason take it easy mayfield it's it's duck soup for our bazooka bazooka boys he says nice panel work boom tank the soldiers are coming out because the tank got disabled when they're coming out they're shooting them when they're coming out of the the top beautiful panel work really just showing the progression of time right very nice very nice I could hear Mayfield suck in his breath with relief. There was a catch in his voice. But we're not out of it. If they can't get us one way, they'll try another. That's the idea, isn't it? To infuriate them into leaving their positions, to dislodge us. The function of a bone in the throat is to keep choking the victim till they die trying to get rid of it. Pretty soon, red struffling planes came in to do what the tanks couldn't. The bullets hitting the, the mud as well as the soldiers, right? With death snarling all around us, striking like a thousand battle snakes rattlesnakes mayfield became unhinged grating sobs shook shook his body 
I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Sob. Shut up, you fool. The men will hear you. You unhinge them too. All at once, another sound drawn out may feel screeches. Guardian angels with flaming wings, you and night fighters were diving earthward. They're doing dog fights. Look at that. Two planes. The red planes fell like ruptured ducks aflame to our planes it was like blasting ground targets many of the reds hadn't hadn't far to drop that's a plane in the ground crash so far our strategy was clicking everything the reds sent out against us was destroyed now we had to prove that bombardment, their next logical attempt to dislodge us, wouldn't also avail nothing. But Mayfield had other ideas. I'm getting out of here. I'm not playing bullseye for their artillery. Oh no, come out of the tailspin. We've got a job to do. It's only partly done. You're not quitting now. Oh, he's grabbing him. Mason is grabbing Mayfield by the by the scuffs. I'm not staying here waiting to be smashed to bits. Not for anybody. Men, they brought you here to die. There's no way out. No way out. Oh, he's yelling that to all the men. Jeez. Shut up, Mayfield. Think of your reputation. You've got the brass believing you're something special. They're used, they're used to spare you because they thought you were too valuable. Well, prove it. Impressions mean nothing here. It's what you do that counts. It's coming. Gasp. They'll lay a blanket of shells over us. We haven't a chance. Men, follow me. I'll take you out of this. It's the end, I tell you. We don't have, have to die for anybody. Follow me and I'll get you out of this. Hey, Mayfield, stop. You can't run out of this. Detail now. The whole battalion is depending on us, he says. Right. I want to live. I'm getting out of here. These guys are going with me over my dead body. Look at that. And then the soldiers are watching them. Eh? That can't be good for morale. Explosions everywhere. Right. He's panicking. That can't be good in a battlefield. It was then I made a fatal mistake. I turned my back to Mayfield. Oh no, you hit him over the head. You can't stop me, Mason. Play hero all you like and die. I'm taking the man out of here. Oh, wow. Hit him over the head. Look at that. Stupid. I can't remember exactly what happened next. I only know that for a long time, I heard the most horrifying sounds. Pinwheels of light whirling before my eyes. The very ground heaved under me. I couldn't understand it. Oh, boom, bam, crash. Boom. It was hours later when I came to. A weird quiet had settled over everything. Two men hovered over me. Everybody else was gone or dead. What happened? Where is everybody? Mayfield. He scrammed like a scared rabbit. We went with him because he ordered us to but when he we realized that he was running away we came back here and some of the guys are still with him oh no look at that yeah. 
there had been a brief bombardment which suddenly stopped only later could I figure out why it stopped there could be only one reason Mayfield's bunch had been spotted flares they see us run run From reports which came in later, the panicked bunch ran in all directions at once. Fast as the Reds ran, Mayfield and his bunch ran faster. It was a case of hounds chasing hares all over the valley. Run north, they're getting closer. Stay away, curse you, stay away. They're just shooting them as they run away. Oh no. Oh, there goes Mayfield. Finally, there was nowhere else to run except into a wall of bayonets. No, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. Yay. He gets bayoneted in the belly. The following morning at headquarters, we learned that the decoy job thanks to Mayfield's self-sacrificing effort, had led the enemy a wild goose chase for five hours. Mayfield gave his life to trick the enemy. The general saying, we're recommending post-humanist medals for him and his brave men. Lieutenant, aren't you going to say anything? There's no point, Joe. Mayfield was yellow, but let him rest in peace. Let his reputation gleam. Somebody more important than the general knows the truth. He doesn't go by impressions. Wow. The end. The end. Wow, these are heavy reads, eh? think maybe we end it there oh there's this one too look at this one this looks like another cowardly thing maybe we save this one for another day look at this one I love this panel what does this say tin soldier I'm always suspicious of the guy who must do something for the boys in the trenches. But what, what Buzzy Baron actually did changed a lot of minds and hearts. Starring Clark Mason. So this is all Clark Mason. I think we'll end that there though, gang. This was a heavy read. This Mayfield right doom patrol which is the main story right take a look at that surrounded surrounded on all sides by the reds lieutenant clark mason is trapped with his doom patrol That was a great read. And thank you very much, Nicholas, for funding this haul as well. Eh? This was the one actually, Nicholas, uh, this comic was the one that Nicholas, I asked him later on during a live stream we did on Twitch, if there was any of the comics after we loaded up the comic book haul that we'd want to read. And uh, this is the one Nicholas said that he'd be interested for us to read. And it was fantastic, really. Great read. Golden Age War comic, very heavy. Very heavy read. We're gonna read more comics from this haul. We're gonna read one more comics, comic book from this haul that we did. Comic book haul number four. And that's the Ant-Man prototype. And then we've got a couple other readings that I've uh, picked out for us to read. A dinosaur read. And uh, we're also going to be reading an, 
um, romance comic, Silver Age romance comic that was uh, sent to me in a batch as a, a sort of a gift. Someone thought of me when they came across them and send them our way, send them our way. So we'll have a read through one of them. It looks amazing as well. Okay, but for now, wow, what a heavy war comic from the 1950s, 1952. Spy Fighters number one from Atlas Comics, right? Fantastic. That's it for now, gang. And I'll see you guys in the next video.